Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. My name is Drew, the host of Never Behind. Now, due to the stimulus checks that have been released during the pandemic, we have been experiencing high inflation, which went all the way up to 9.1% in June last year, which was the highest in 40 years. So in order to drag it all the way down to 2%, the Fed has been aggressively increasing the Fed fund rates in a very short period of time. Now, due to the Fed fund rates hike, the Treasury bond yield has skyrocketed and is now over 5%. Now, since we still have a number of issues in the market, Market, such as first of all still high inflation and due to the high inflation and prices we have the highest debt in credit cards ever in history we also still have high interest rates that are giving the majority of companies a hard time with their debts and therefore triggering massive layoffs for the companies themselves to survive and also have banks with over 650 billion in unrealized losses with their investments in the treasury bonds now a high percentage of investors are starting to buy bonds with solid safe high yields that they know will be guaranteed to get back while waiting for the market to settle down and to see if the major market crash really comes or not. Now, one of the great investors that have been waiting on the side and continuously buying three to six months high yield treasury bills is the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett. Now, Warren Buffett came on an interview and was saying that Berkshire has been buying 10 billion worth of high yield treasury bills every Monday and accumulating more cash while holding them in treasuries and now have a stack of over 157 billion in cash. However, on the other hand, Ron Barron, who's also a well-known and highly respected investor, has shared that he has never ever owned a bond in his life before. And the reason is that the market will eventually rise over time and that he would rather keep buying great companies with huge growth potentials rather than having a fixed and limited income from bonds. He also shared a very interesting point that although we do have ups and downs in inflation from 0% to 20% based on history, in average, the inflation will be 4 to 5%. And therefore, when we say that the market it grows in average 7 to 8 percent, 4 to 5 percent is inflation, and the remaining 3 to 4 percent will be the growth from companies. However, it hasn't been that long since the companies have started to grow substantially and predicts that the market will grow in a much faster pace in the upcoming years, and therefore feels much comfortable investing in companies and doesn't even hold that much cash and keeps buying stocks as much as he can. Whereas Warren Buffett says that he will always keep cash on the side. So, with that, let's hear from the two investors on why they either buy treasuries or they they never even consider buying a treasury at all. I also wanted to share that Mumu is having a great promotion, giving out 15 free stocks, which I think no one should miss. So if you want to receive 15 free stocks, make sure you click the link in the description below. I've also started a Discord that is 100% free and have great experienced investors regarding stocks, options, swing trading, chart analysis, and even cryptocurrencies, sharing their ideas on opportunities for investments every day. So if you are interested in being a part of the community, please click the link of Discord in the description below. Well, Becky, good Friday. I was working. Mark Millard, who handles all the bonds and stock for all of Berkshire, was there. And uh, I knew I was leaving town on Sunday night. And Mark says, what do we do next week? And I said, here's what we do. And on Monday, we always buy treasury bills. We bought about $2 billion of them. We got a 499% bond equivalent yield. And But the only question is whether we buy three months or six months. And then and, and I tell him, use his own judgment on that. So Monday, I was here. And he sends me a sheet as to what we did. And I don't change anything. Tuesday, he does the same thing. And I'm going to be traveling tomorrow, or you know, he's going to be operating in, on Wednesday, and I'm not changing any instructions to him. He's going to keep doing what he's been doing. I mean, I we don't make our decisions as to whether to own part of a company for the next 20 years. Uh, we don't have any idea what, what anybody's going to do next week or next month, and we haven't changed our course. You know, in 58 years, we just want to buy good businesses, and we want to buy people we like and trust at a decent price, and and we'll keep doing that, and we'll keep buying treasury bills every every Monday, and we haven't missed a Monday yet, and uh, and we keep all our money short, and we keep it in treasuries, and we were getting four basis points, which was 40 million on 100 billion dollars worth, and now we get almost five percent, which is five billion, so we've got a hundred times the earnings, <laughs> but it doesn't make any difference. I mean, that is there to be the strongest company you can imagine, and also to take opportunities when they come along. And that's what we do. And some periods, there was a period about a year ago, I mean, we bought 20% of a company that already the index funds own, you know, 25 or 30%, Dodge and Cox 
Knoxville and 10 percent. We bought 20 percent of a company in a month or something like that. But now it's a different kind of market and we can't acquire at the same if we're, if we're buying. We'll just keep doing that. That's what we've been doing for 58 years. And we don't make stock market guesses. And uh, we don't know how to profit by looking at broad statistics and guessing what stock markets no, or bond markets will do. But you have said that you do pay attention to interest rates and that interest rates are like gravity on equity prices. There's no question about that. I mean, so where's you, the level of gravity? Are we on the moon? Are we on earth? Well, what we're we? in a way different position than we were when the, essentially what the option was to get four basis points on bonds. And that changes the value. It changes the value of real estate, changes the value of, of equities. It, it changes everything. But that's all happened in my lifetime, various ways, all the way up to a 21 and a half percent prime and down to zero, which nobody thought we would ever get. So anything can happen. We're prepared for anything, but we like to do things. Over time, we want to buy good businesses. It's that simple. And we always want to have money. I think a lot of people are really trying to rethink what's the mix of what a portfolio is even supposed to look like. Are, are you buying stuff? What are you doing? Every day. I am amazingly bullish. And so basically in 1960s, there was Vietnam War. Uh, there was inflation. There were ta- assassinations of the presidents of the United States, president of the United States. Uh, there was assassination of Robert Kennedy, assassination of Martin Luther King. Right after King is assassinated, all of Washington was on fire. That was a city falling apart. It looked like the country was ending. There would be marches on Washington. And with the market, the Dow Jones was 1,000. The GDP was 800. 800 billion. That's now 27 trillion. The Dow Jones was 1,000 then. It's 34,000 now. So that means you double every five years, every 10 years, rather. So basically, the way I think about it is that inflation, whenever you have a war, you have a pandemic, government has to pay for it. And when the government pays for it, then when you come out of it, they have to pay it back. The way they pay it back is not by paying down any debt. They pay it back by making your money worth less. So there's inflation. So the way we think about things is that inflation is going to reduce the value of your money in half about every 14 or 15 years, about 4 or 5% years inflation. That's my whole lifetime. Four or five percent. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's seven, but four or five percent is the number. So you would never buy a two-year bond or a five-year bond or Ever. a ten-year bond? I, I've never owned a bond. Ever? Ever. Not one. And I don't have a lot of, a lot of cash either. I'm always invested. And whenever I have a chance to buy more, I buy more. I think of what's going to happen in the next two years. By December of 25, I think we'll be back to where we were in... Uh, and dis- what gives you that confidence? The businesses are growing and the multiples are now lower. So basically, multiples are now lower. The businesses are growing. You know, the growth in our country is about 7% a year historically. It's about 4 or 5% of inflation and about 2% is real. The, all the growth that we've had in the United States in our country has been in the last 200 years. And it's the last 20, 30, 40 years. It's accelerating. Growth is accelerating. It's not slowing down. So as you just heard from both Warren Buffett and Ron Barron, they have different approaches regarding investments in treasury bills, which is nothing wrong. But what does matter is that they have their own plans. If your plan is to have cash on the side and wait for a market crash or a better opportunity to invest in the market, then buying short-term treasuries with high yields totally makes sense since the yields for bonds are over 5% and it wouldn't make any sense to park your money in a savings account that only gives back approximately under 0.05%. Now on the other end, if you believe the stock market will keep going up and you have a lot of time to be invested in the market, it might be a great plan to keep buying great companies as the market goes down since then you'll be accumulating great companies at a lower price and when the market turns around you will be getting great returns on your investments so again there is no rights and wrongs since everyone has their own style of investing but it is very important that you have a plan whether the market goes up or comes down rather than just investing based on news or what other people are doing so with that i hope you got some value out of this video and hope to see you on my next episode